Dr. Nyang, uh, thank you for talking to us. Thank you for having me. Uh, you are a writer, a social entrepreneur, a farmer, mm -hmm. and a public talker, a speaker. Mm -hmm. um, these days we have seen um, uh, you know, a lot of uh, boats uh, capsizing uh, in the Atlantic Ocean, mm -hmm. uh, filled with youth, African youth, trying to reach Europe. Mm -hmm. We also have seen um, some cases of human rights vi violation in Tunisia mm -hmm. um, concerning uh, migrants from Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. What take should we, uh, should we have on this? Well, the, the issue of, of migration for our young people is not a, a new thing. Mm -hmm. um, we've been talking about it for years. Uh, and it's not only in, in, in Africa, um, but I, I've seen it all over course the emerging countries or countries that there is no, the lack of hope, um, such as Mexico, and Latin America, it is the same. Mm -hmm. And it's very unfortunate for, for us in Africa that we still talk about this issue for many, many, many years without finding the, uh, the solution to these issues. Because if you have a country or a continent, then that the main goal of the young people uh, is to flee the country is to leave the country, there is a serious issue. Uh, because it should have been the opposite. We mm -hmm. have all it takes to give hope to our young people in our countries. Um, I've talked about this, I've written about it. I've, uh, this is why when I came back home in, in, in Africa, I decided to focus more in empowerment with young people, to focus more on skills training mm -hmm. with young people, especially rural young Africans, in the farming sector, in the technology sector, in women empowerment, I focus more on how we can help these young people to equip themselves with uh, tools to create jobs and then help them have financial literacy, financial freedom. Because if people live in a country, go to school or don't go to school, but if they go to school, have the degrees that they need. Mm -hmm. And uh, they get out, they see their families 30 years old to 40 years old. You still cannot find a job to support your family. You have no other way but to try to flee your countries. Myself, right. I had to leave the country to um, come to the United States mm -hmm. to make it here. And I think this is a huge issue that, that concerns all of us. This is why I went back myself home to try to bring hope in the capacity where I can and to create change where I can. Um, then in, even in partnership with the government today uh, mm -hmm. of Senegal, because I've been training hundreds of young people in these areas of uh, agriculture, in the areas of technology, and President Macky Sall has uh, you know, instructed his government to help fund these young people that I'm training who are now creating small jobs for themselves and then also being able to live in the country with dignity. Mm -hmm. Because to me, it's beyond just going to uh, the sea to try to come outside. They are going to look for the Eldorado they cannot find in their own countries. Is and, it, and we um, need to work on this to make it a reality for them to, to, to dream at home. Is mm -hmm. it a governance issue or is it just uh, too many young people yeah. having a false hope that they can find a better life somewhere else? Well, what is it? Or is, it, is it both? Well, I think it's both. It's both. It's, um, government has a sense of responsibility, but also our young people have a sense of responsibility because uh, government has to create a space where young people can can dream, can have access to jobs. Those who are creating jobs have entrepreneurs. They can be supported to um, be able to succeed the entrepreneurial journey. But in the second, in the, in the other term, also young people also have a role to play in this because there is a lot of young Senegalese or young Africans who never left the country but are doing very well, <laughs> who started with zero dollars and all today they are the leading people who are leading the economy in our Senegal, in our country, for example, the head of the private sector, the top 10, 20 of them, most of them didn't go to school and never left the country. Mm -hmm. And today they are hiring hundreds of people who live in the country. And we can name many of them. This shows us also that some of us think that if we go overseas, we can make it, which is true to many but we can also stay home to make it. Me, I, I decided to go overseas to make it. So I cannot tell people do not go overseas because uh, I didn't have anybody at home to help me, so I had to take my chance. But I came back home to help as much as I can. But I cannot tell them also that 
you can only make it when you go overseas. In Senegal with nothing, I've seen many young people who start with anything today. They don't envy anything for people who went overseas to try to, mm -hmm. you know, chase a dream that today doesn't exist. Look, the future of the world is in Africa. Everybody else is traveling to come to Africa to create businesses because the growth is there. We have to take advantage of that, especially us, those who have traveled the world and been overseas. We have a responsibility also, not only to sell them the dreams that you can only make it overseas, but we have to come and create projects and empower and give skills to these young people. Work on the knowledge economy, how we can equip these young people with the tools so they can be competitive at home and overseas. Yeah. Now, uh, John Young, let's talk politics in your country of origin, Senegal. Mm -hmm. uh, President Macky Sall, after a few, uh, quite a few days of tension, has uh, spoken publicly and decided not to run for a third uh, term. Um, are you surprised? Uh, wh what is your reaction? Did you expect it? Well, you know, I, I commend President Macky Sall for that historic decision to not run for office. You know, even though uh, there is a lot of people in his party who ask for it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I commend him because he listened to the people, but then he made the right decision. The right decision we will help to propel democracy in our country, that will help to ease tension in our country, and that will help also to, uh, you know, um, create a new playing field for the country and also for West Africa, beyond West Africa, to the continent. To give an example that um, we can create a democratic system where everyone will have a chance and when it's your term you can create elections, not even be a part of it. He will be the first president to be able to do that. And, and even beyond that, because if you look at the president's background, what he's done in the country. I live in Senegal. I see um, the realization of the president and his, 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 uh, you know, his work these past 12 years. He's done phenomenal work for the country um, that we can touch. From the countryside, I've seen, I live in countryside, I live in villages. Uh, what Pei they say one of his programs is doing to uplift the villages and backgrounds around the country is phenomenal. So. Nobody can criticize him to what he was able to do for the country. But for him to say, you know what, my person is bigger. Senegal is bigger than my person. It spoke to me. It spoke the core of all of us as Senegalese and friends of Senegal around the world. We commend it. And I think that um, this is a lesson of democracy. He's actually talked about it, that he's not going to run. He wrote about it in his book. Even though a lot of people thought he was going to do it, he came back to reinforce to us that Senegal is bigger than my only person. And this spoke to me, so I cannot do anything but commend him. And I met with him a few days ago, and mm -hmm. I, this is one of the first things I, I told him, that um, he's done something that's going to go down to history, um, that not only for Senegal, but for the continent and his mm -hmm. diaspora. But he was... <coughs> But he was also criticized for allowing the, the uncertainty uh, go on for so long, and we are only six, seven months uh, before the election. Um, on the human rights uh, issue that some think uh, uh, is, is a big issue for him, or at least the, the deadly repression uh, before his announcement, is it something that, uh, that's going to stay as a stain on, on his legacy? Well, listen. That I'm not a, me, I'm not a judge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not a jurist. I'm not a, an official who can decide what is going to happen to mm -hmm. who and who. I'm a citizen of the country, and I can appreciate what the president decided not to run. What does it mean for the country? Um, now, um, there is a lot that's been happening these past few years. We all see, and he said it himself, and the, the international community has said it too, there is investigation that's being made is being done around the country. And we wait for this official investigation that will um, allocate or that will put in um, the responsibilities for anybody who played the responsibilities towards those things. And I think as a citizen, that's all we can do is to observe to see what are the real 
you know, repercussion of what happened and who is responsible for those things. And I hope the justice will play its part, you know. So as a citizen, that's all I can say towards what's going on with that, you know. Now, President Makisal not running in 2024, does it open up the field? Does it allow more opportunity for people like yourself? Are you planning on jumping in? Well, look, um, it definitely opened the door for many people. You can see right now, there's more than 30 candidates already in the country. <laughs> you know, um, people otherwise wouldn't have run. They were coming out to run for office, which is good for the country. This is good, healthy democracy. Um, because everybody that is citizen for the country, children of the country should have the, if they think they can serve the country, should have the opportunity to participate. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as me, um, you know, I'm in Washington. This is one of the reasons why I'm here, doing some meetings. I'm, I've received a lot of pressure. I receive a lot of um, you know, people, messages, and Locally, asking you to run, asking me to run mm -hmm. democracy. Uh, I mean, uh, locally, internationally, the diaspora, but also friends of the of the country, uh, the United States. Uh, a lot of friends here that I'm meeting with today and, and tomorrow, but also different countries. And I'm doing this tour to listen to people to see mm -hmm. uh, what will I decide to do. In the meantime, I'm just listening, talking to the right folks in the Middle East, here in Europe, and all friends of, of the country, but most importantly, in my country, in the countrysides, you know, the youth, the women, and to see what can we do to bring our contribution to the future of our country. If we think and we believe that um, we getting involved can advance the future of our country, can create a, a better quality of life for our people, can give hope to young people, can um, create a country that anybody can come and compete anybody can be born and be proud to the Senegal dream that we can create, then if I think I can bring that to the country, I will definitely run. Mm. But if I think that um, it is not the time, I will support the people that I think will embody that, um, that ideal that of my dream for the, for the country, my dream that any woman will have access to decent life and quality of life, that any farmer will be able to farm and be proud to be a farmer. Any young person will can. This is why I just did this amazing um, partnership with the UNDP, mm -hmm. uh, the largest bilateral you know, development organization in the country, in the world, um, to train 25,000 young people in cybersecurity in the continent. And we just signed the first, um, starting the first pilot project in the continent. Uh, 24 countries involved with these young people and you will go to 25,000 young people in cybersecurity. This will give access to these young people to work for the world. This is what India did, this is what Asia has done with the United States around the world. And we have to be able to equip these young people with what they can deliver and have dignity, have access to jobs mm. and quality of life. So you talk a lot about agriculture. Do you think that can turn the tide for Africa, for Senegal? Because mm. we, a lot of young people don't think agriculture is a a big career, if they can make a career out of it. Is it something, if you decided to run, that you're going to emphasize on? Well, not only agriculture is, is a career, is a business, but also agriculture to me is life. It's, it's the core of any country. We have to be able to, especially in Africa, we have the youngest population in the world. We have the sun. We have, you know, um, all the resources we need, edible land, water. We should be feeding the world. And until now, we are waiting for Ukraine issues. Right now, is going through what's going on, and we're going through it because we don't have access to the weed that we need. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for rice in Asia. You know, many countries in in uh, small cities like Bali and stuff, and China sending us in Vietnam rice to eat. To me, if we um, put agriculture in a cornerstone of our developmental uh, structure or project that we're putting on we can solve a lot of issues. The first is we will be able to solve the issue of uh, self-sufficiency for food, but also job creation, which is our biggest problem. This is why these young people are taking the, the roads. And then, then we can build the rural areas of our continent because the problem is everybody is li leaving the village to go to the, rural, to the cities to look for jobs. This is bringing violence, it's bringing now uh, security issues, it's bringing um, all of the dense capacity of people that are living in different 
uh, neighborhoods that's like if one house is going to be 100, 200 people, all those things, disease, whatever. But if we're able to build the countryside through farming, like they did in the United States, in Canada and everywhere else, in Netherlands, people will be happy to live in countrysides. Then you can uh, bring the quality of life in people. You can build good schools in those villages. You can build, you know, uh, police stations. You can build fire stations. You can build now, you know, quality of life where people can be able to be proud to be farmers. Because today, if you're, you say in Africa you're a farmer, they allocate that with poverty. Mm -hmm. And I want to change that. This is what I've been working on these past 10 years with Jeff Zone. And thankfully, young people are coming to, 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 to these to this stories because they're coming from around the world, the diaspora, and even leaving the cities to come to find me in those villages to be inside the agricultural fight that we put on. The second thing, not only agriculture, but technology. I've done an agricultural school, but I did a give one project, Digital Skills Academy, because I know if we train them in cybersecurity, in data, in AI today, they can fill in the jobs that's needed. But if we fail to give them that knowledge, to prepare them, Africa will be in the same order where we are today. People are going to be coming out in this technology. We'll be just downloading and downloading and downloading, but we don't create anything that the world can use. We cannot create any jobs. India understood that. So they invested in education. They invested in science and technology. And today, India's economy is doing pretty well. South Korea is doing pretty well. They're competing in the United States. They're competing everywhere. Everybody's taking their jobs from America right now. They are talking or uh, working with the Indians from, the, from applications like we work and Fiverr and etc. If I'm able or we're able to equip our young people with the skills and technology, they can now even work for American companies to gain more money, more capital, while they're living in Africa. Mm -hmm. This, if we can combine the two, the UNDP understood that. That's why they coming at me, we signed this partnership together to focus on those two and make it a huge project, 25,000 young people around the continent in 24 countries from West and Central Africa. This will be able to not only change the narrative of these young people, but the course of history for our continent. Mm -hmm. John Young, thank you. Thank you very much for having me.